Hello everyone and welcome to So What? I'm Ellen March, Director of Content for Sulky of America. If you're joining us for the first time, give me a thumbs up or say hello in the live chat and let me know that you are watching and where you're watching from. Uh, this is our place where we talk about what we are sewing. And this week I am going to be sharing with you a serger project. Now, if you don't have a serger, no worries. We are going to go through this project and I'll give you some tips if you're gonna be using a regular sewing machine to make this, no problem at all. The benefits of using a serger are really that we can uh, finish and sew even the bulkiest of seams much quicker, much easier and faster than we do on our sewing machine. But again, if you are using your sewing machine, I'm gonna tell you how to set that up and what stitches to use to replicate the look of the serger for this project. Um, I'll also give you some tips on finishing the raw edge of the project using some binding or using a decorative stitch, again, to mimic that of the serger. So nice to see lots of familiar faces coming into the live chat. Be sure to put your questions and comments in the live chat because as long as you're doing that, giving me those great emojis, somehow engaging with the post today, whether you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube or on Twitch today, that's all you have to do to be eligible to win today's gift from Sulky, which is an assortment pack of Felty. It's going to be our rainbow assortment pack. That's right. It retails for $16.99, I want to say, and it comes with lots of colors of the rainbow of Sulky Felty, which is one of the materials we're going to be using for today's project because it makes a great lining for sunglasses, eyeglasses, readers, and we're going to be making a sunglasses case today. So hopefully you've got sunny weather out there. And, you know, spring is kind of turning into either summer or fall or winter, depending on where you live here in Colorado. Um, you know, we never know what the weather is going to be like in the spring. It could be snowing one day and 80 degrees the next. But at any rate, we always need our sunnies uh, because we're in, you know, a state that has something like 320 days of sunshine one of the reasons why I love to live here. So at any rate, um, I hope you're getting in the mood for some, you know, nicer weather, some sunshiny days, and this sunglasses case pattern is going to help you out. Make sure that your sunglasses are nice and protected and close at hand, easy to find in your bag of stuff. All right, before we get to that, I want to make sure everybody is aware of this amazing sale that we have today at sulky.com. It is our 1040 EZ 10 days of deals. And today's deal is Sulky Poly Sparkle Thread. Today only you can get 40% off of Sulky Poly Sparkle Thread. So be sure to take advantage of that. And I'm also going to give you some tips for working with Poly Sparkle Thread to create today's project. So I know it's a great deal. That's right. I love my applause sound effect. It's like one of my favorite things on Tuesday afternoons. So check out this deal at sulky.com. You don't need a coupon code. The thread is already on sale for you waiting for you to add it to your cart. Um, and for the remainder of this week, you will find some more deals as well. And speaking of 1040 EZ, hopefully everybody got their taxes done yesterday. What a drag. Am I right? Um, but if you are getting a tax return, might I suggest that you move that money right over to join us in Bali in October with craft tours. I find that if I assign that return to something exciting, something for myself, something where I can enjoy traveling, um, learning how to batik fabrics, um, checking out an elephant park, going to um, a special bird exhibit. There's so many things packed into this Bali tour 
and it's happening this October 2024 with Sulky and Craft Tours. I will be hosting a group of hopefully lots of you in Bali and we can join or we can experience this fantastic location together um, and be in a paradise. I mean, I'm so excited. All right. So um, check that out. I put the link for this particular tour directly in the description of today's post. So I encourage you to use that link rather than going to craft tours directly and trying to find the sulky tours amongst everything that they offer there. So you can head directly over to that link, check out the itinerary, check out the pricing details, and you can also get on a payment plan with craft tours. So if you start now in April, you'll be ready to go in October and you can go with us. And I'm just so incredibly excited for this. Um, our Ireland tour closed for registrations on Sunday. So I hope you were able to take advantage of that so that you can come along. Um, and we have more exciting travels in 2025 as well. So you can ask about those um, and get on the list to join us. All right. So speaking of sergers, it is National Serger Month. April is National Serger Month. So we have been including tons of serger content um, here at sulky.com and on our education platform at sewingonline.sulky.com. And as I mentioned, if you don't have a serger yet, but maybe you're in the market for a serger or you want to know if a serger is right for you, might I suggest you take advantage of some of our serger sessions over on our education platform, sewingonline.sulky.com. We have a great serger session for beginners called Basics and Beyond. You really learn the absolute basics of working with your serger during this session. Katrina Walker is the instructor for this session, and she's been doing serger content for Singer Viking Faf for a long time now, and she really is the best of the best when it comes to learning what your serger can do for you. She breaks things down really, really easily in manageable chunks of information. So you can kind of choose which lessons you want to learn, where you want to take your serger. Do you want to start at the very beginning? Do you want to start with a lesson on threading? Do you want to start with um, how to set your serger up for different utilitarian and decorative stitches? So this has a lot of information in it and we actually have kits available for this session as well. So you can create a beautiful table topper or a beautiful pillow using the same piecing techniques on your serger. So this is a really great uh, opportunity to get the most out of your serger investment. And if you don't have a serger yet, you can take this session and kind of see if it's right for you and right for the types of projects you like to create. Also included with that session is a serger buying guide that you can print out, take to your dealer, whether you are shopping for a serger for the first time, or maybe you want to upgrade your serger. Maybe it's, you know, old and dusty and been living in your closet for a while and it's time for an upgrade. You can print out that serger buying guide and check off the, you know, features and techniques that you want to do and make sure that the model you're shopping for can, you know, can get you where you need to go, okay? Also at sewingonline.sulky.com is a little bit more advanced serger session called Next Level Serger Success. With this uh, session, you're going to be taking your serger to, obviously, the next level. So you'll learn even more stitches, hemming techniques, um, a little bit more advanced decorative uh, surging, and you're going to be learning what surge as you go means. You can make an entire quilt on your serger. You will learn how to make a simple table runner with this technique, but you can apply those lessons and skills that you learned to larger quilts and quilty projects. So this is another really, really great resource to get to know your serger a little bit better, get more comfortable with using it for more things, um, and you'll be ready to dive in 
to our embroidered lounge pants sewing session and use your serger to create a great comfy pair of pants. Now this sewing session, the reason it's called a sewing session is you can make these pants on your sewing machine. But if you happen to have a serger, there is information on how to use your serger to complete the pants as well. So there's a lot of information packed into this uh, sewing session. You will learn how to make the Pittsburgh walking pants by Amanda's Bundles. The pattern comes free with purchase of the session. You will also learn how to add embroidery to lounge pants and leggings using a brand new sulky embroidery design that is only available in this sewing session. And the design also comes free with purchase of the session. You'll get the design in three sizes. So depending on your hoop limitations, you can still stitch the design onto your pants. We all love the look of the embroidered, uh, you know, stretchy pants down the legs and on the cuffs. And I give you all kinds of videos and written tutorials and downloads and ancillary information for embroidering stretch fabrics while still retaining the stretchiness of the fabric. That's right. Your fabric is going to move with your body. You won't have this bulletproof embroidery that, you know, is super stiff while you are bending and stretching and walking around in your beautiful pants. So a couple of things um, I also want to mention about these pants is they have more room, more uh, ease in them than, let's say, a legging, okay? And the fabric is a little bit more st substantial than your typical leggings fabric, especially if you buy a cheap pair of leggings, right? Sometimes when you bend over wearing leggings, even if they're black, you could see right through them. Well, there's no see-through in this fabric. It is buttery and awesome and wonderful and has a little bit of a brushed appearance to it. So it's like a charcoal black uh, color of fabric. It has a really nice wide waistband. So you have that bit of tummy control that we are all looking for in a pair of comfy pants. There's also some optional elastic you can add into the waistband so that you don't run the risk of them kind of rolling over or falling down on you. Um, you know, on those days like Thanksgiving when we like to indulge a little bit, we need a little bit extra room in our waistband. Also, along with this wide waistband, there's also a pocket sewn into the side panel so we can put our phone, our keys, whatever, you know, our, you know, waste bags when we go on a dog walk, things like that, right there, side panel pockets on both sides. And then, of course, we have our room for embroidery. The embroidery is actually done with either poly sparkle thread, which is on sale today, or poly deco thread. So if you want a little bit of metallic, you can use the poly sparkle thread that's in the kit. If you want it to be a little bit more, I don't really want to say plain because it's still our beautiful shiny poly deco, but if you don't want the metallic look, you can use the poly deco uh, decorative thread that comes in the kit. So two thread spools included in the kit for the embroidery, plus you get thread spools to construct your pants as well. You'll get four thread spools. So if you want to construct your pants on a serger, you have all four threads that you need for a four thread overlock. If you want to use your sewing machine, you might go through about a spool and a half of thread, and then you'll have a couple of spools left over to use for other projects. It's a nice almost black color, so it's a nice neutral that will go with a lot of things that you have um, you know, pending on your must make list for the spring and summer. So as I mentioned, I just wanted to prove to you when I stretch my pants, I still have the stretchiness. This is not a bulletproof embroidery. We are actually launching a brand new stabilizer with the embroidered lounge pants uh, kit and session, and it's called Action Back, Action Back by Sulky. It is perfect for stretchy fabrics, for heavier weight t-shirts, 
for performance weight uh, fabrics like golf shirts and um, tennis skirts and things like that. It is absolutely amazing, amazing stuff. You will love working with it. It is really what you need to embroider anything stretchy, anything like what I mentioned, and still retain the hand and the stretchiness of your fabric. It is only available right now in one yard packs in our kit for this lounge pants session. So here's what the back of my embroidery looks like. I actually also applied some tender touch to the wrong side of my embroidery, but I only applied it to my cutaway stabilizer edges. So it is not fused to the fabric itself, but it is still acting as a cover up for the back side of my embroidery. So when I wear the pants, I don't have any scratchy stitches touching my legs while I'm moving and grooving. So you'll learn all about that during the session in all of the videos for our embroidered lounge pants sewing session. You can see I surge finished or I surged uh, my pants for construction, but I also, again, provide tips for using your sewing machine as well. Also, the pants have a comfortable gusset in them. So this makes it much, much nicer to wear these pants. You don't have all these intersecting seams right at the you know, area where we would like a little bit more comfort. So really great pattern. Again, you will get the digital pattern from Amanda's bundles included with purchase of the session. Here is what that looks like. The size range in this pattern is really awesome. You, It comes in extra, extra small all the way up to 10 X. So it's a really great pattern for a lot of different figures and you get tons of style options. You can create shorter bike shorts. You can create a capri length. You can create a lounge pant length with different waistband treatments, different leg cuff options, pocket options. So it's a really, really versatile pattern that you can make all year round in different fabrics. This is the Celestial Zen embroidery design that you also get with purchase of the session in three sizes, again, as I mentioned. And let's see, here's what the kit looks like for the session. You get this beautiful fabric from Amanda's Bundles, a two yard cut of it. It's a very wide fabric. So the two yard cut goes all the way up, I think to a size 2XL. Now, if you are creating the biker short or like a knee length pant, you will have enough here to create all of the size ranges. If you want a longer pant, capri or longer, then you'll need an additional one yard of fabric if you are size 3X to 10X. You can either purchase a second kit of the embroidered lounge pants, or you can purchase one of our copycat leggings kits, which comes with a beautiful brushed pink or galaxy black fabric that's called a double brushed poly spandex. And you can mix and match these fabrics with the peached performance fabric to have sort of a color blocked look to your leggings. And both of these fabrics are so nice. And all I could think of to say is that they're buttery because they're so soft and squishy and nice feeling to wear. And here are all the beautiful thread colors that I mentioned, as well as that action back stabilizer. And this kit is available at an amazing, amazing price while we are uh, working our way through the session. This session is available to view starting tomorrow. So if you register today, tomorrow you will get an email saying the session is now ready for viewing. And you can go in and watch any of the videos you want in any order that you want. You can grab your pattern, your embroidery designs, and go through the entire pant making process and embroidery process and have yourself a really great pair of pants that's great to wear for so many things. I even want to make a pair to sleep in because they are so comfy to wear. All right, Karen says, my kits should arrive tomorrow. Um, okay, Crystal says, can this pattern be adjusted to create straight leg pants? So if you want a roomier fit, you don't want them, you know, tight 
or tighter. I shouldn't say tight because they are very roomy, but from the knee down, you can adjust um, or you can just size up. So you can adjust the pattern. I would adjust from pretty much like the thigh down and retrace the pattern edges. Um, you can also take the lesson on the copycat leggings, which is included as a bonus video within the embroidered lounge pants session, and you can copy a favorite pair of pants or favorite pair of leggings using those pattern making techniques and you can create your pants using your new pattern. So that's probably gonna be a better bet for you rather than just kind of eyeballing it using the Pittsburgh pattern, know what I mean? Or you can start with the Pittsburgh pattern and then kind of lay your favorite pair of pants over it and copy the straight leg of those pattern pieces. Does that make sense? So I think there are options for making this pattern work for you and for the style that you want. All right, let's see. Susie says, I think I bought the kit last week. All right, hopefully you're good to go then. Um, Barb says, I like the idea of this new stabilizer. I embroider little knit dresses for my granddaughter all the time. Perfect. Um, new stabilizer sounds like a great idea. Amy says, can you show the waist again? Certainly. All right, so this is the wide waistband. And the elastic is optional, but I did add it. I added about, I think it's an inch wide elastic um, into mine. Maybe it's an inch and a quarter. It feels a little bit more substantial than that. And it's a little bit hard to see because of the black, but it is a nice wide waistband. And you sew the elastic in to the upper edge waistband seam so that, uh, you see the stitches there? The stitches I use to kind of tack the elastic are on the inside of the pants. So from the outside, it doesn't even look like elastic is even added. It's just like in there for a little bit more security, <laughs> rather. All right, I hope that is helpful. And again, you can add cuffs to the pant. I just hemmed mine. There's also an entire uh, video or session with multiple videos actually for three different ways to hem your pants. You can hem them on your sewing machine, you can hem them on your serger, or you can use a cover stitch. And all three versions are included in the session um, under the lesson called hemming. All right, so lots and lots of information in that session. I hope you all uh, join because tomorrow is the day. Now, it is not a live event, so if you don't register by tomorrow, that's okay. You can register later, and then you will be able to watch everything as soon as you register. Um, it's just that tomorrow is the day where you will get the email saying it's ready for viewing. Betsy says, those pants look like they would be versatile and get a lot of mileage. I know they really are a go-to pant, you know, for spring, for summer, for easy wear. You can even make your pants longer, wear them into fall and winter, and just swap out your tops, you know? And it comes in that great charcoal black color that really goes with everything. All right, love pockets in my lounge pants. I know, I'm getting to the point where if I put on a pair of pants and there's no pockets on them, I just get rid of them. I, I can't, I can't have it. I really can't. I have a pair of pants that I love to wear and the pockets are really too small. They're too small for my phone. They're too small for my hand. They're just too small, but I love the pants. So I really should copy these pants, make the pockets more substantial. And you know what? I'd be good to go. <laughs> All right. Let's see now. Okay, Barb is asking, did you add the elastic with the serger? I would like to learn how to do that efficiently. Actually, I added my elastic on the sewing machine um, and I zigzagged it on there. But, you know, you probably could add them with your serger as well um, and adjust your differential feed so that your elastic gets sewn in um, and kind of gathers the edge while 
you're doing it. Um, I did not, however, do that on mine. So that would be a little bit more advanced technique for sure. But thank you for um, giving me that idea. The pattern does direct you to do that on the sewing machine, but you know what? There's really no reason you couldn't add it um, on your serger. You would just have to do the construction a little bit differently because this elastic is added when your waistband pieces are already folded. So pretty sides are already face up. So you'd have to add your elastic differently, turn your waistband right side out. It would be, it would be um, a totally different construction method for the waistband. But I do suggest that you watch the copycat leggings bonus content within the embroidered lounge pants session um, because there are some different waistband treatments you can do um, as well as uh, different ways of sewing in the elastic, I believe, are also within that um, bonus video. All right, uh, Marsha, I do see your comment and please reach out to customercare at sulky.com if you have a question about your order um, or about the tracking of it. We definitely want to make sure that you're getting the kit that you ordered. So email customercare at sulky.com. Uh, with your order number and they can assist you. All right. Uh, yep, Crystal says adding elastic on the serger is really quite easy. Um, it is, it's just, it's gonna require you to construct the waistband and attach it to the pants in a little bit different way, but definitely can be done for sure. All right, June says, I agree, pockets are a must. All right, so let's see, what else do I have to talk about here before we get started? Speaking of National Serger Month and all the celebrations that go along with it, did you know that Sulky is having an amazing National Serger Month giveaway? Have you all entered to win? Because all you need to do is head on over to our giveaway page. We will put the link to the giveaway in the comments uh, right now so that you can head on over and enter to win because you can win over $367 in Sulky Thread. This thread is great for your serger. You do not have to use serger thread, thread that is labeled for a serger. You can use all kinds of different threads in your serger. And in those serger sessions that I mentioned, we also go over different threads to use in your serger and why you don't necessarily even want to use thread that's labeled serger thread. A lot of the times this thread I find, you can just break it simply by pulling on this thread, some of it. We wanna make sure we're using high quality thread in our sergers and we can even use decorative thread to create really cool effects. If you've ever made a coat out of, let's say um, like a neoprene fabric or a scuba fabric or a wool fabric. These fabrics don't need a lining. So you can create some really cool interior seaming details using decorative thread in your serger loopers. So some of this thread can be used there. You can also use this thread in the needles. This is our polydeco thread. All right. And these are our dream slimlines of Polydeco. So really, really awesome giveaway from Sulky. And all you need to do is enter to win. Very simply, click on a couple of boxes and you're in. All right. Let's see. So let's get to our serger project of the day, which let me just locate my correct photos here. Serger project of the day, which is our Serger sunglasses case. This is a free pattern at sulky.com and I want to give you a little bit of background for this project. So I actually stumbled upon this type of project um, on the We All Sew blog and I thought what a great idea. Who has made this? And it was my friend, Sue Overy from Suki Sews. Love her. 
So I took a look at how she constructed this really great eyeglasses case. She calls it an eyeglasses case because she uses it for her readers. Now, the case was very simple to sew on your serger, requires two pieces of fabric and a little bit of batting. So I kind of took the guts of that pattern with Sue's permission, of course, and I took it in a new direction or a different direction, we'll say. First off, I wanted to add some quilting on the case to, you know, just make it a little, I don't know, more decorative. I also wanted to use felty for the interior lining of the case. That way, when you're putting your glasses in and out, it has a nice felty interior and your glasses aren't going to get scratched. They have a little bit more cushion and, you know, luxurious feel next to the lenses. I also wanted to add this little hanging loop so that I could easily hang my sunglasses case on a tote bag strap, tuck it inside, and I don't have to, you know, root around for my sunglasses case when I'm at the beach or, you know, when I'm at the pool, etc. It's just hanging off of my tote bag strap. Now you do want to hang it on the strap and then tuck it inside because, you know, it could, it could move and we don't want our sunglasses falling out, right? All right, so these are the modifications that I made to Sue's original pattern. Um, and I will also give you some tips for how to use your sewing machine to create this if you don't have a serger because our edges are not finished with anything other than serger stitching. All right, so first things first, whoops, that's not the first thing. First things first, we're gonna gather our materials. So I used a piece of cotton fabric, a piece of batting, and a piece of sulky felty. I also used a little bit bigger piece of fabric, or longer rather, for the hanging loop. Now, if you want dimensions for everything and the full instructions for how to make this, make sure to download the free pattern. You'll get it at sulky.com, add it to your cart. It will say $0, go through the checkout process, and then you will have your pattern right there in your Sulky account. You can access it at any time, print it if you wish, or just view it on your tablet or computer or what have you. All right, so cut out all of your pieces, and then, we are going to make a little quilt sandwich out of our main fabric squares or rectangles, if you will. I believe they are squares. I think they're about eight inch squares. Um, you can certainly enlarge this or make it a little bit smaller if you have a smaller pair of readers and you want them to fit a little snugly. So we're going to adhere our felty to our batting with our uh, pretty cotton fabric right side up. Now we're gonna plot our quilting lines. So I like to do this even on the smallest of projects, um, just so that I have a good idea of what it's gonna look like once I add those stitches. If you want to just free motion this, drop the feed dog, start playing around with your fabric squares, by all means, this is a small project and this is a great time to practice new techniques um, because you know what? It's low stress, right? It's a small amount of fabric, and if we mess up, we can make it a de design point or design designer touch, um, or you can just go with it, right? Or you could cover it up with an applique, something like that. So really have fun with it and experiment with some different quilting, you know, threads, different techniques, different styles of quilting. You can even use your decorative stitches on your sewing machine and just do consider. Uh, um, equidistant lines of the same or different decorative stitches across, you know, the length of your fabric squares. So I just did a super simple crosshatch pattern on my fabric because really I didn't want to compete with the cute little wave print of this fabric. So I just plot my quilting lines with a chalk or a removable fabric marker. And once I have those all drawn out onto the fabric, I simply stitch along those lines. I did a boring old straight stitch, but again, you could do a wave stitch, you know, a serpentine quilting stitch, 
another decorative stitch of your choice. Maybe you have a little sun or, um, you know, another type of summery themed decorative stitch on your sewing machine that you could choose and simply stitch along those lines to quilt all of our layers together. After the quilting is complete, we're gonna round just one corner of our quilt sandwich. And the corner that we're gonna round, if you have your fabric face up, uh, right side up on your work surface, you want to round off the upper right corner. All right? And I just used a, uh, oh, what's it called? Just a, a, a round thing that holds cording, okay? So if you have um, a spool of ribbon or something like this, you can even use a large thread spool or even your KK2000 can and just round off that corner. I used, you know, first I started with my chalk and then I just took my rotary cutter there you could see my chalk line that's just rounding off that corner. And then I take my rotary cutter and round off that edge. All right. So after we've done that, we're gonna prepare our fabric strip to create the handle. If you're working with a particularly lightweight fabric, you can use a little bit of interfacing on the wrong side of the fabric here. Um, but I really didn't feel that was necessary because of all of the folds I was creating in the fabric. It made my handle nice and substantial. So first we're gonna fold all our handle rectangle in half lengthwise with the wrong sides together and give it a good press. Then we're gonna open up that fold and fold the raw edges to meet along that center fold line. Give it another good press. Now we're gonna fold in half along our original fold line, sandwiching all of those raw edges. So now we have the makings of our nice skinny little handle and we can top stitch along both edges. So for this top stitching, I used 40 weight poly deco thread and I used the same thread in my serger as well. Now you can also do a combo of threads in your serger you can use poly deco in the needle and a 30 weight cotton blendables in the looper. I know, crazy. And that'll give you a really cool blendables watercolory thread effect along the edge of your project. Or you can use all the same poly deco in your serger needles and loopers. I set my serger for a four thread overlock, but first we are going to fold our sunglasses case in half so that we can mark our first stitching line. So fold it in half and you can see I've got my curved edge on top and you can see a little bit of the felty um, interlining peeking out on the opposite corner edge. So I just fold it in half and clipped it with my Clover Wonder Clips and you're gonna kind of eyeball where your curve ends on the top of your serger case. Eyeball it and just make a little mark, and you also want to mark along your felty edge. So where that meets the inside, make a little mark. We're going to surge from our corner that's opposite the curved edge all the way down to the mark. This is what it looks like on the felty side. And this is what it looks like from the cotton side. I've again set my serger for a four thread overlock. So I've got my two uh, needle straight stitches and then I have my decorative um, yet functional serged edge that is a little bit narrower so that my stitches are closer together so that they are concealing the raw edge of the project really well. And in the pattern, I give you some tips for how to set your serger um, so that you can, you know, uh, make that, make those looper stitches um, closer together. All right, so here we have our first serger stitch done. 
And now we're going to fold our case in half again and clip our side edges together. Now we are going to make sure to fold our hanging loop in half, match our raw edges, and we're just going to place the hanging loop right underneath where we finished the, that first serger stitch. Clip that in place. It is rather bulky right here, so it's definitely preferred to use your serger for this. You might want to fiddle with your presser foot pressure, but honestly, I didn't have to. My serger just buzzed right down this. All right, so now we're going to sew from that corner all the way down to that side corner edge, and our stitches are going to enclose the case as well as stitch our hanging loop in place. All right, so now we have our serger stitches along that edge. Everything is getting nice and flattened by those serger stitches as well. And now we're gonna serge that lower edge so everything is enclosed. You can see our pouch is really taking shape. So you're gonna want to do to hide our serger thread tails. So what I do is I take a big fat needle and I thread it with my serger thread tail and then I weave it in through the stitches on the wrong side. So this would be weaving it in through the stitches. But then I thought to myself, how do I conceal these stitches or these this thread tail even more? Because I don't really want my ugly thread tail in my pretty stitches. So what I decided to do, instead of weaving it through the stitches, I took my needle and made a big fat stitch into the fabric so that my serger thread tail was hidden inside of the fabric edges rather than inside of the serger stitches. Makes sense? Then once you weave that in, you can clip any thread tails that remain and tuck them neatly in between the fabric layers. Now we do need a little bit of our sewing machine here because we want our hanging loop to, instead of laying flat over the top of our project, we want it to go the opposite way. So I took it over to my sewing machine and I just top stitched it so that it would lay in the correct position or in the position that I wanted it to. So we do need to use our sewing machine a little bit for the quilting as well as for our last step in securing that, that handle or that strap. So there you can see just my little top stitching um, to make sure that the handle is going the opposite direction. And just like that, the project is done. You can finish this in no time. You can create one of these for all of your friends and family using some fabric scraps and an assortment pack of felty will go a long way. The, the assortment pack in the rainbow uh, colors, which is our giveaway for one lucky viewer who is watching, commenting, giving me those great emojis, somehow engaging with the post today. That's all you have to do to win a rainbow assortment pack of felty. You'll get 12 sheets of, of felty. Um, they are eight by 10, I want to say, in all the colors of the rainbow. So you can pair a sheet of felty with um, a fabric in your stash and you can create loads of sunglasses cases. So here's what it looks like tied to the inside of my tote bag. Um, and where you position your handle really matters, okay? So, so that your sunglasses case kind of hangs like this inside of the bag instead of hanging upside down, right? So just be cognizant of that as well. And then you will add your sunglasses case after you get it attached to your tote. And here it is kind of hanging on the inside. Now I can stuff my big old tote with a beach towel, some goggles, you know, three pairs of swimsuits for my kiddos. And we're ready to go to the lake, to the beach, to the pool. You get the idea. All right. So you could even create sunglasses cases or goggles cases using this pattern as well. Super, super easy, very simple. Now I mentioned I was gonna give you some tips for using your regular sewing machine for this project. And since all of our raw edges are showing, 
we will need to either use a satin stitch on our sewing machine and you know choose a wide stitch that's very narrow so that your stitches are almost on top of each other while you're sewing out the satin stitch. It's going to use a lot, a lot of thread, but it's going to look really beautiful um, because, you know, you don't have to add a binding when you add those satin stitches. So that's one way to do it on your sewing machine. Another way is to use a very narrow binding to bind all of those edges. So first you will bind that first edge, tuck in the raw ends of the binding on that upper edge corner, sew it until you know the end of your curved edge, trim it off. Then you will add binding in the same way to that side seam and binding in the same way to the lower edge seam of the sunglasses case. So a little bit more involved to add binding, but it really makes a nice finished appearance. You can still add your hanging loop and insert it into the binding, and then you'll do the same thing, flip your hanging loop over the top of the binding and do a little top stitch just so it lies um, in the direction that you want it to for hanging. And for really, you could just put this on your wrist as well and head out the door and have your sunglasses at hand. All right, so super simple on your serger, super simple on your sewing machine, or you can take it up um, and kick it up a notch and add some narrow binding to those edges on your sewing machine as well. So ways to make it your own, ways to use either a serger or a sewing machine and have a great looking result. Again, you can find this full pattern with all the instructions at sulky.com. Add it to your cart, it will say $0. Go through the checkout process and then you will have this PDF pattern living in your sulky.com account so that you can access it at any time. You can print it off and have it next to your sewing machine or have it up on your screen while you are going through the construction process. After you make one, you'll probably have it memorized and you'll be able to make tons of these. Um, really great party favor too. If you have some little ones having a summer birthday or something, this would make a really fun party favor for all of the kiddos. Um, and go get a cheap pair of sunglasses at the dollar store, something like this. Put them inside, everybody's got a new pair of sunglasses for the party. That would be really, really cute. All right. Um, Kristen has a great idea. She says you could add a small rectangle on top to hold your lip balm too. Great idea. Love it. All right. Kathy says, looks like a nice, easy, easy project. Um, Debbie says, could you place the hanging loop at the top um, of the case so that the case hangs straight down when in your bag? Great idea. Uh, you absolutely could. You would want to add your hanging loop when you do that first round of stitches, um, add your hanging loop and at the very end, no, actually I would add it in that first round of stitches, then move your hanging loop to the top, do your little top stitch and then finish constructing it. That way the hanging loop doesn't get, um, you know, sort of in the way while you're doing that first, um, second and third stitching. All right. Great idea, Debbie. Wish I had thought about it <laughs> because then you don't run the risk of your glasses falling out. Um, I will say mine is pretty snug. Um, so even if I turn it upside down, the, the glasses stay in there. But if I was putting a smaller pair of glasses or a pair of readers in there, they might have a tendency to slip out. So moving that loop to that upper edge, great idea. Dorothy says, I love the rainbow felty. Me too. Um, you know, if you have watched So What, um, you know, for quite some time that I talk about felty a lot. It is such a great, great needle felt to use. You can felt with it. You could do needle felting with it. It has been tested. Um, you could even use felty for the outside of your glasses case as well and forego the uh, quilting cotton altogether. You can even use it for the hanging strap because the edges don't fray. I would do two layers of the felty and top stitch the edges, and you could have an all felty sunglasses case, um, and that way you don't have your, um, you know, cotton fabric edge 
uh, showing if your st serger stitches aren't as close together as you want them to be. Um, using a no fray fabric from the start would, you know, eliminate that altogether. I would still add the batting between the felty layers, just cut it about a quarter of an inch smaller on all sides. That way your batting edge isn't sticking out when you do your serging as well. Again, wish I had thought of that from the start because that's a great idea. Uh, Jan says, great timing for spring and summer and fall weather when it is sunny. Yes, absolutely. Teresa says, I'm not familiar with Felty. Is this a new product? So we've had Felty um, at sulky.com for quite some time now, but it is relatively new. And it comes in three different assortment packs. You can get the rainbow pack, which is definitely the most popular. You can get the heather pack, which has sort of that mottled look to it in some neutral colors. And then we also have a neutral pack, which is whites, blacks, browns, grays. You get the idea. So depending on your project, depending on your needs, you can grab up an assortment pack of them in the 8x10 size. You can also buy felty by the roll. So if you want to create a ton of aqua sunglasses cases, you can grab up a roll of felty and have that color in a greater quantity. Um, so lots of different, all the colors are available on the roll as well as within those different assortment packs. But it is specifically manufactured to take a lot of needle penetrations, to accept a lot of thread without buckling or puckering. So you can add that quilting, you can add machine embroidery, you can add, you know, a four thread overlock stitch, and it's not going to buckle or pucker along your stitches. It's really, really great stuff, and I think you'll love working with it. It has the hand and the look and feel of wool felt, but it's polyester, so you can wash it. You can add a water-soluble stabilizer to it or add stick and stitch to it that washes away um, and it's not going to harm the felt. So really, really amazing product. I highly suggest you give it a try. Um, it's great, great stuff. All right. Uh, Gina says, quilt it with the serger using chain stitch or cover stitch. All right. You don't even need to switch machines. You can use your serger for the whole thing. Love that. All right, Linda says, put two cases back to back to carry your readers and sunglasses in your purse when shopping. Love that. And then maybe you add an embroidery design. You can label it even, you know, readers, sun, sunnies. <laughs> and then you uh, know which one to grab when you're looking for your glasses. So that's a great idea. Janet says, just threading my serger terrifies me. I know this is the case with so many people. The threading really seems to be the um, thing that, you know, makes people not want to even try uh, getting a serger. And I will say, with the advent of air threading systems, which are more prevalent in more serger brands and models these days, it really, really takes the fear out of that threading process. I know a lot of people who still just keep white thread in their serger or black thread in their serger and they never change it out. And when they run out of thread on one of those loopers, it is like the earth is shattering. So there are lots of ways you can overcome this um, and certain tips, right? So especially in your loopers, sometimes you can tie a new thread on the end of your old thread and keep surging along and oftentimes that little tiny knot will travel through your looper and allow you to keep on sewing without stopping and re-threading the whole system. Sometimes that doesn't work, especially if you're using, um, if you've run out of thread in your needles, a lot of the times that, that knot isn't going to travel through your needle eye um, and it's going to stop your operation completely anyways. But with the air threaders, as long as you're following the steps of which one to thread first, when to, you know, send that shot of air through your machine so that your thread follows. Um, I find it's easier and easier the more you do it. It's just like using your regular sewing machine. You know, when we first get our machine, 
We're like, how do we thread this? And what, what's the thread path? And where does it go next? Right? But the more we do it, it becomes automatic. We can do it in our sleep. So the more you use your serger, the more comfortable you're going to get with threading it and using different threads and, uh, you know, turning those dials to use some different settings as well is going to be a lot easier and more second nature to you. So I highly suggest you check out our serger sessions at uh, sewingonline.sulky.com. This would be a great one for you if threading your serger terrifies you. It's called Serger, serger Session Basics and Beyond. This is a really, really great resource for you. You can access this at any time. The content never expires. So if you grab this up, watch a few of the videos, and then in a couple weeks, you're ready to tackle a serger project, get your serger out, watch some of the videos again, you get the idea. It's always there for you, never expires. You can also kick it up a notch and take our serger session, next level serger success, and kind of expand your knowledge to the next step and get more and more comfortable with using your serger. So there's no time like National Serger Month to get to know your serger a little bit better and use it for some more projects. Dust it off, um, you know, thread it anew <laughs> and have some fun with it. So especially with a low stress project like this one that uses very minimal fabric and materials, uh, you can really build your confidence and, you know, bang out lots of projects in no time um, and, you know, feel a little bit better about that serger uh, investment. All right. Uh, Barb says, I look at the diagram every time I switch from overlock to cover. I don't think I'll ever remember the steps. You know what? I do too, just to make sure I'm not missing something um, because once you have it threaded, it's like, you're good to go. So that's really the most important part. Um, Darlene agrees. She says air threading is a game changer. It definitely is. So check out those and check out the serger buying guide that you can get within that basics and beyond serger session. And if air threading is for you, it's going to narrow the playing field a little bit so that you know what serger to shop for, maybe for an upgrade or for your first serger. Because really, you want to have success the first time you use it, right? You don't want to be struggling from the start because that's really going to, you know, determine how much you use that serger. Um, and with everything costing so much these days, you know, it's really important that we're using these things that we have, maybe gathering dust in our closet. Um, take advantage of making your own clothes and making your own lounge pants and changing them up so you have a lot of different styles in your closet. So I really hope you give surging um, a try and uh, give your serger the, the star treatment it deserves. <laughs> All right. Also, yes, you can use poly sparkle thread in your serger as well. That would make some really cool decorative effects in those loopers. So if you want to try using poly sparkle in the loopers for your sunglasses case, you can add a little bit of sparkly pizzazz to your project. I would use Poly Sparkle in the loopers and Poly Deco in the needles um, because the needles are what's creating your construction stitches and then the loopers are what's giving you those decorative edges or those finished edges. So that would look really cool in Poly Sparkle. All right. Betsy says, I use my serger so much I don't have to dust it off. I have to let it cool down. All right. <laughs> Star student, Betsy. I love it. All right. Sue says, I traded my serger in for an air serger and now I use it. That is amazing. I love that. I love that dealerships are allowing these trade-ins and it really is such a great, great feature. So call up your sewing machine dealer, see if they do trades like that. Um, and maybe you can upgrade for a fraction of the cost and get yourself, um, you know, a serger that won't intimidate you, hopefully. All right. Well, I hope you enjoyed today's project and today's So What. Thank you so much for joining me. Remember, our embroidered lounge pants sewing session um, is available for viewing starting tomorrow. So make sure you are registered so you'll get that little notification email saying that the session is ready for viewing. 
I want to see everybody's pants. I want everybody to tell me about the embroidery. I want everybody's feedback on the action back stabilizer because I want to know if you love it as much as I do. Um, it really is a game changer for stretchy items, stretchy fabrics, um, t-shirts of, you know, a medium to heavyweight sweatshirts, golf shirts, all kinds of fun, active wear, all of this. So I want to hear everybody's thoughts. We'll talk about it next Tuesday on another So What. Be sure to join me, set your notifications, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get notified every time that we go live. And I will see you next week for another 